Good morning, Science 20s. Our lesson today is going to be on impulse. Impulse goes directly with what we learned on the last lesson on momentum, because impulse is a change in momentum. So if we take a look at these two definitions, I want to remind you that anytime there's a push or pull in an object, we will refer to that as force. Impulse is when we have the product of a net force applied to an object over a certain time period. So we're going to multiply force times time interval. Now, I want us to think about this for a second. First of all, it's a little confusing because one, there is no symbol for impulse. But what I want us to remember is impulse is a change in momentum. So delta P, where P was momentum, delta P is now going to be impulse. So change in always means final minus initial. So when I have a change in momentum, we're going to take the final momentum, subtract from it the initial momentum. And again, I will refer to you in your data booklet to page two. These formulas are listed there so you can pull them out of there as required. Now, Here's the formula we're going to use for impulse. Now, what I want to point out is a reminder. When we looked at momentum, momentum was delta P equals mass times velocity. Okay, And when we switch this over to impulse, we are going to make this, instead of momentum, we are going to make this a change in momentum. Well, the only way you can change momentum of an object is to do one of two things. Either the mass of the object changes or the velocity of an object changes, right? Because those are the only two variables for momentum. Well, if this is an object of, let's say, a car is hitting another car or an owl is striking a mouse to knock it out so we can take it for prey, the mass of the car or the mass of the owl, it's not going to change in the example. So therefore, the only thing that's going to change if we change momentum is going to be the velocity. So that's where this formula comes from. So when I have a change in momentum, we now call that impulse. And to get a change in impulse, we're going to multiply the mass of the object that tends to be pretty consistent, right? The car doesn't change mass, but it can accelerate or decelerate. So it can change velocity. So because, again, this is a change in, and it's always final minus initial for change in, we can write this formula again as mass times the final velocity minus mass times the initial velocity. The other formula we could use for momentum, and so we'll make this also equal to, sorry, impulse, will be, so change in momentum, will be take your force, times it by your time. So that was our de direct definition of impulse up here. The product, the answer of what I get when I multiply force times time. Again, in this formula, force will be in newtons, time will be in seconds. Therefore, my impulse unit will be newton seconds. Now, we'll notice that impulse is same of change in momentum. So the other unit we could take for this is kilogram meter per second. So we will accept both of those units and we'll see as we do questions why we will accept both. So let's clear this. And what I want to do is let's try an example. So a raw egg, a raw egg excuse me, drops to the floor. If the floor exerts a force of nine newtons, so again, a force, and forces always have a direction attached to them. Because if you think about it, right, whether I push or pull at an object, there's a force attached there. There's a direction attached there. So I'm pushing away. I'm pulling towards. Okay. So over a time interval, so we're going to have a change in time, 0 0.030 seconds. Determine the impulse. So we are trying to find impulse which is a change in momentum. Let down be the negative direction and up be the positive. So a raw egg drops to the floor. If the floor exerts a force of nine meters, so if the egg is falling down, the floor is pushing up. 
So this is going to be positive because we're looking at based on the floor in this example. So to find impulse, our formula is impulse, which is, again, we should already know, change in momentum. So delta P equals force times the time interval. So my force is going to be positive 9 newtons. My time interval is 0 0.030 seconds. So in my calculator, when I go 9 times 0 0.03, my answer is 0 decimal 2, excuse me, 7 newton seconds, and we would call that positive. Remember, the question says, determine the inf impulse required to change the egg's momentum. So the egg has momentum down. The floor is going to supply an impulse up, which means that's why it's a positive. Or we could write this as 0 0.27 newton seconds up. If you don't like newton seconds, although those are the units in this equation, you could write kilogram dot meter per second as well, if that makes you more comfortable for this. Okay, let's try another example. So, a raw egg with a mass of 0 0.065 kilograms falls to the floor. At the moment, the egg strikes the floor, it is traveling at 4.2 meters per second. Assuming the final velocity of the egg is zero, determine the impulse required to change the momentum of the egg. So we have a mass of 0 0.065 kilograms. We have a velocity of 4.2 meters per second. Now, we'll notice that this velocity is different. At the moment the egg strikes the floor, it is traveling at 4.2 meters. So that is its initial velocity. Its final velocity is going to be zero because remember, when it hits the floor, it's going to stop. It's dead. So we would like to find what is its impulse. So. Excuse me. What is its change in momentum? So if I take a look at my formula sheet, I can find that change in momentum or impulse we know is, right, momentum final minus momentum initial. Well, since we know that momentum equals mass times velocity from the previous lesson, we can say, hey, the mo final momentum is the final is the mass times the final velocity because p equals mv. So if this is for final, and then we can say, hey, that is for final, but is the initial momentum not take the mass of your object times by the velocity initial of your object? So these guys equal each other, these guys equal each other. Well, if I look at my substitution, since my final velocity, because my egg goes splat on the ground, it's zero. Anything times zero is zero. So this is going to cross out. So my formula to find impulse is going to be negative mass times the initial velocity. So let's sub in our numbers. Negative times my mass is 0 0.065 kilograms times my initial velocity of 4.2 meters per second. Now, if I take a look here, let's read the question and see. My egg is falling to the floor, so this velocity is going down. So we're going to make it as negative. So don't forget the negative sign. So we have negative brackets 0 0.065 times a negative 4.2. So my two negatives are going to cancel out. My answer is now going to be positive 0 0.27 kilogram dot meters per second. So my impulse 
to change the momentum of this egg, right? Because the egg is going down. So my impulse is to go up to change the direction of the egg. That's why my value is positive. So I could write it as 0 0.27 kilogram dot meters per second up as well. The other thing we could do is instead of using this unit, because this is the unit in the question, I could also do Newton dot seconds. So Newton seconds. So example number three, a car is hit from behind with a force of 50,000 Newtons. Both cars come to a stop within two seconds. Calculate the impulse experienced. Okay, why don't we pause the video, you write down all the numbers you get from the question, determine the formula from page two in your data booklet, and see if you can get all the way to the answer, then unpause the video to check your work. So my force is 50,000 newtons. My time it took two seconds for the cars to come to a stop. We are trying to find impulse, which by definition is change in momentum. So car is hit from behind. So let's say it's going in a positive direction when it was hit. So our formula is going to be impulse or change in momentum times force times the time interval. So we are going to take 50,000 newtons and we are going to multiply by two seconds. Well, that means we're gonna get 100,000 newton seconds or 100,000 kilogram meters per second. Again, this positive means our vehicle had impulse in the direction that it got hit from. So we said it got hit from behind. So let's say it hit it um, head going west. My impulse is going to be moving west at 100,000 newton seconds. Last example. Again, why don't you copy this down? Write down your variables, pick a formula and try this for yourself. And then let's check over your work. So a hockey puck strikes a goalie mask. The time interval of the impact with the mask is, so change in time, the puck makes contact with the mask for 0.012 seconds, during which the mass exerts a force. So the mask is pushing back of 400 Newtons. We are going to determine the impulse of this example. So that's going to be a change in momentum. So change in momentum equals force times the time multiplied by time. So we're going to take 400 newtons, multiply by 0 0.012 seconds. And my answer is going to be 4.8 Newton seconds. Now, the impulse is the mask is pushing back with an impulse of 4.8 Newton seconds. So if the puck was coming at, let's say, west, impulse is going to go east pushing back. Hopefully that clears up some of the math.